If you want to get better at climbing, Louis Parkinson might be the ultimate online climbing coach. Louis understands movement and mindset like no other, and he has a talent to eloquently express detailed tips and insights to his climbing students. So in this video, I'll be sharing five lessons that I learned from watching everyone's first and favorite climbing coach, Louis Parkinson. This first lesson springs to mind whenever I consider using a tow hook. And there's two main takeaways from watching Louis coach this technique. First, he explains how for most techniques like heel hooks or drop knees or rock overs, the goal is usually to pull one's center of gravity closer to the foothold you're using. We're aiming to put our foot on something and then usually get our hips towards it. If we're doing a drop knee, hips come towards it. If we're doing a heel hook, hips come towards it. If we're doing a rock over, hips come towards it. Toe hook, I think it's the only time where you put your foot behind it and then try and get your hips as far away as possible. The toe hook, however, is the exception to that rule because to get tension through your leg and onto your foot, you actually want to be leaning away from the hold or feature you're using. You're stretching the leg, leaning away, even looking away, to activate tension and friction in the toe hooking foot, which makes a lot of sense once you consider why you'd want to be using a toe hook. A toe hook allows you to reach further than you might be able to with, for example, a heel hook, as Coach Louie demonstrates in this clip. But I can't reach anywhere near as far off a heel hook as I can off a toe hook. So toe hooks are a really good way of still keeping yourself anchored to something, but being able to reach really far in the other direction. The second takeaway teaches us where to place our foot. Louis likes to demonstrate how the biomechanics of our foot allow for more stability and strength when we place the hook close to our shin instead of on the actual toes. Watch this little demo. Let's just do a very, very quick, <laughs> silly demo. Okay. Raise your foot like this. I'm gonna try and make it touch the floor. Okay. Try really hard. Don't let me make it touch the floor. Okay. Ready? Okay. Oh. Yeah, that is hard to like. It's very difficult. Okay, try again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so closer to the hinge of your ankle can withstand a lot more pressure before the foot starts bending down. I've got pretty strong ankles, but I'm having to pull really hard. Whether I get it there or we were looking at over the top earlier, one of the reasons that that's much easier is I'm hooking pretty much where my laces would be. If you consider these two tips when you're faced with your next toe hook, you'll be set for a top. If you've been as loyal a student as me, you'll have heard about Lewis's alias Captain Cutloose. Well, in a video featuring Hannah and Nathan of the Hannah Morris Bouldering channel, Louis shares a great insight about body positioning when cutting loose on steeper terrain. When Louis knows in advance that he'll have to cut loose on a move, he tries to find a way to bring his hips into the final dead point position as early as possible. By bringing his hips out early, he's able to avoid swinging out aggressively when he cuts his feet. Watch how Louis demonstrates how you can practice jumping into the end position of a move to find that dead point. The only other thing I'd recommend is just jump into that position and try and memorize this shape. Okay. And then you're trying to jump to land in that shape. This drill helps you know what the position feels like before jumping towards it from the previous move. Yeah, 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 man! Okay, nice. That was gorgeous. Go on. Eliminating the swing can be a way to unlock a harder boulder with technique instead of having to resort to blaming your failure on something else like a lack of finger strength or upper body strength. Jumping into positions from the ground is a fun way to warm up as well, so give it a try during your next session. A third lesson is hidden in a video where Louis coaches his cameraman and editor Sam as they try to climb some harder grades. Louis shares a mindset lesson on how to stay motivated when a certain move just isn't clicking. When a move of a hard climb is shutting you down, he tries not to give up on the problem entirely, but to try and have a look at the next moves to see what the boulder has left to teach you in the moment. Feeling like we're just repeatedly failing on the first move, mm. 
I think is easy to have that mindset of like, oh, I can't even do the first move, this yeah, is hopeless. Yeah, yeah. I'd like us to start from the match and just try a couple of the other moves okay. so that you're then looking at it going, oh, once I work out to do that match, I can then do the next three moves. That's really exciting again. Now. Yeah, yeah. If the success we're looking for is doing the climbs, yeah. then we could have a strong chance of ending the session going, oh, what a failure, I didn't do any. Yeah. If we set the goals, as I think we should, as my aim is to learn more about the moves yeah. and to try really hard, well, if that's the measure of success, you're smashing it so far. We're mm. learning loads and we're trying really hard. Yeah. Great, we just have to carry on doing that. This is an insight that I apply whenever I try boulders at my max level, because inevitably there will be some crux move that might feel impossible. I'll give those crux moves some solid tries, but I don't mind skipping it and progressing to a next position and feeling out the other moves of the climb. If I can, I might even add a more accessible hold to a problem, replacing the crux to try and top it that way to then see if I can integrate the actual harder move after a rest or during the next session when I come back fresh. Lesson four is a second tip to fortify your mindset as a boulderer. Watching Louis' coaching when I started climbing has imprinted me with the idea that beginner, intermediate, and even advanced climbers always have a lot left to learn. In this clip, Louis is coaching a student when he notices how they're starting to steer away from the goal they set out at the start of the coaching session. He reminds himself and his student that the goal of their session was to have fun and to learn stuff. They both realize how easy it is to get stuck on small scale goal getting. I think we should only have one more go at this. Mm -hmm. We're really close to doing it, which is really exciting, but do you remember what the aim we said for the session was? Have fun. Have fun and? <laughs> learn. And learn stuff. And yeah, okay. I genuinely we're... forgot, sorry. <laughs> you did great, you remembered, you remembered. It was to have fun and learn stuff, which we're doing. Cool. And I think we have, tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I think we've learned enough that you know how to do every move in this. Yeah. And you're basically gonna do it on any attempt. And as much as I'm excited to see you do the climb, and I think, oh, right, let's, let's have one more attempt, but then I think we should move on and we'll learn some stuff on some other climbs. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Staying mindful is key when you're trying to learn because losing track of your broader goals because of an emotional response to some type of failure might ruin the fun and your openness to learning. The fifth and final Louis lesson is a climbing specific technique drill called the one touch only drill. The premise is simple. Once you've placed your hand or your foot on a hold, you can no longer adjust that placement. This drill forces you to focus on each individual move to stay mindful and in the moment. This one, one touch only. The rules are incredibly simple, it's all in the title. Once I grab a hold, I'm not gonna shuffle around and try and find something better. Once I put my foot down, I'm not gonna shuffle around and try and find something better. Um, I would recommend the first time you do this, get a friend to watch you and play like sudden death mode. So, Sam, you will be the judge. Okay. Okay, viewer, you will also be the judge. I'll be the climber. I'm gonna do some readjustments on purpose, which just for, this, for the purpose of this demo. Sam's aim is to help me notice as soon as I readjust so that I'm really, really aware of it, right? So. Right hand. What? You right, you what adjusted you on your right hand, just that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so good, very, very good. Sam's paying attention, so right, okay. Now I'm gonna be more focused, yeah. Got that exactly where I want. Yeah, okay. Right foot. Oh, there's no trick in this guy. All right, all right. <laughs> Left foot. Oh, okay, perfect. So I would play that with a student for a few minutes and I'd point out each of those readjustments. So get yourself doing that with a friend. Once you get to the point where you notice you've readjusted before your friend gets a chance to say anything, very good. Now you've built really good awareness of readjustments. I'd like you to switch to the main version of this drill, which I'm, I'm going to do now. Pick three mid-grade climbs. I usually go for like flash level, but I'll warm up a little bit more on this one and then I'll do some harder ones. I give myself three attempts to try and find the minimum number of readjustments I can make on a climb. So it might be that I do the climb once and go, cool, I did it, but I readjusted like five or six times. So now I'm going to do it again. Let's see if I can do less than five readjustments. This is a really, really good way of just repeating climbs and learning to do them a little bit better, but with a specific focus as to what you're doing better. Oh no, Sam. Did I miss something? No, I've stood right on the edge of a hold and it feels really uncomfortable. Oh, what should I do? Okay. Should I readjust it? No. I guess I better just make myself stand on it anyway. Yeah. Oh, and it actually turns out to be kind of all right. Nice.
It also helps to isolate moves mentally, which is a good way to approach hard climbs, where every move needs to be near perfect to conserve energy to send. And that's five. Thanks to Sam at the Catalyst Climbing Channel for giving me the green light to use these clips. Subscribe to the channel for more to keep learning together. And there's no need to go anywhere else because you can just watch this video next. Click it.